the focus of our research program is to try to understand how the brain develops differently in males versus females. And the reason we want to do that is to get some insight into why boys have much higher rates of autism, early onset schizophrenia, uh, neurological disorders associated with speech pathology such as stuttering, Tourette, apraxia, etc., much, much more frequently than girls do. So we think something happens to the developing male brain that puts them at risk for these disorders. So our goal is just to understand in a healthy situation how the brain develops differently in males versus females. And to use that, we want to get at the biological origin, so we use an animal model. So we've been studying the laboratory rat because it has a fairly sophisticated social repertoire. And one of the behaviors that we'd like to study is a social play. We call it rough and tumble play. So it's when two animals chase each other, they pin each other, they even stand up on their hind legs and box. Um, very similar to children that they chase each other around and, and wrestle. Uh, and the boys, the male rats, do this more frequently and more intensely than the females, just like human boys play more physically and intensely than females. Girls play, they just don't play with quite the same intensity as boys. So we knew that a particular brain region called the medial amygdala is critical to this sex difference, but nobody knew exactly how that sex difference was established, how this neural circuitry was sculpted to be different in the developing male versus the female brain. We found a, a quite a surprising role for the brain's immune system, or the microglia, in being active in sculpting this process. So by increasing endocannabinoid signaling, androgens are, are able to program a developmental trajectory and the microglia come in and are actively engulfing newborn cells during this developmental period. By engulfing these newborn cells, we can shape the developmental architecture, uh, which will later produce um, sex differences in the circuitry and subsequent play behavior. The other big surprise, though, was is that the, the stimulant that makes these cells more hungry, you might say, and engulf other cells, is actually the brain's own marijuana. It's called the endocannabinoid system. And we found that that system was more active in the male brain in this region than the female. And that stimulated these microglia to basically be hungry, have the munchies, and eat these other cells. Um, and so that then has this long-term consequences for the way the animals played later on. So my main role was to sort of figure out if this was specific to the amygdala or if they're also very hungry in other regions too. So what we found is that there isn't a sex difference in the microglia eating during development in these other brain regions. So it was very specific in that way to the amygdala. One of the questions that still remained after a lot of the work that John and others had done was, what is the cell type that the microglia are murdering? You know, who are they affecting preferentially? Um, so when I came in onto the project, that was really my role was to figure out that mystery. And we ended up finding that a large majority, like 85% of the cells that were marked with this marker um, were astrocytes. So when we manipulated this system, we could make the males play less frequently, play more like the girls, the females, and we could stimulate the females to play more like the males. It was really surprising because the males, they, they played a lot less than before. I mean, it was, it was surprising at how much their play behavior was dampened. Um, that was kind of shocking to me because typically the males are uh, really active and tumbling around with each other and it was surprising to see such a decrease in the play behavior. But I think our work really highlights how much we really don't know about how just the brain develops normally. This is a natural process. So many people think of the involvement of the immune system um, in the context of brain injury or inflammation, but it seems that the brain has really co-opted the immune system to regulate actual naturalistic uh, development of the brain, and this is one mechanism by which that happens.